Hey guys, Loot Wizard here with another video on Gems of War, and I want to go over souls in this video. So we're going to be talking a little bit about where you can get souls and what teams I'm going to recommend that you use to farm souls. Uh, souls are very important, especially early on in the game, because you want to level up your troops. Uh, and uh, all of these troops here you see, level 20 troops that I have some are at level 19 like this troop here this level 5 like if I wanted to level this one up it's going to require souls and it's going to take 5120 souls to get this up to level 19 what that will do for you uh, let's just go ahead and spend the souls here as you can see right here on the side all the attack the magic life and armor all gets increased when you level the troop up and you can only level a troop up with souls. Well, I should say that that's not the only way. You can level them up with orbs of growth. But those aren't as easy to get as souls. So the main thing you're going to be using to level your troops up is souls. So we're going to talk a little bit about how you get those. Now, uh, occasionally here on the adventure board, there weren't any today for me. But uh, occasionally on the adventure board, you will find souls. Uh, that you can get for completing three different battles. Uh, so I, I would recommend check that daily for uh, any souls that show up there. Another way you can get souls is in the arena. If you It takes a thousand gold uh, to start an arena battle and then you select troops from a random roster. You get to choose your weapon. Uh, certain weapons are better than others. But if you do win all eight battles here in the arena, uh, if you click here to show arena uh, rewards, you win eight times, you will get 1,200 souls. Now that's the base amount of souls. If you have uh, your celestial armor on, you will actually get more than that uh, because it's going to give you a bonus to souls. So really quick here, I could show you a couple of weapons that are really good. If you're, if you're still farming for souls, Dawnbringer is probably not a weapon you have because that costs 1.3 million souls to craft. But that is the best weapon to use in the arena. If you don't have that, there is... Uh, let me do a quick search. The Runic Blade is pretty good for the arena because when, if it kills an enemy, it will gain 10 to all skills. That one's really good. Um... There's another one. Um, Garland Staff is is okay for the arena. I wouldn't say it's great, but it is okay because it grants all status effects. So you could get Barrier, you could get Enchant, you could get a lot of good status effects on your troops when you cast it. Um, another one is the Writhing Staff is pretty good for arena because it will do damage create skulls but it will entangle the first enemy so that entangle uh, will work really great for protecting your uh, troop that's at the top of your team here in arena because the entangle will cause the, the first enemy's troops attack damage to be zero so that is really good um, there's another weapon too that is pretty good now, the Writhing Staff is a Delve weapon, so you'll have to wait until that shows up in the Soul Forge or in uh, an event. But another, another couple of weapons here that are good, and these are also Delve weapons, is Life and Death and Secrets of the Crypt, simply because they do steal life. So they're, they have a really good survivability in the arena battles. So Life and Death and Secrets of the Crypt. And if you find any other weapons that do uh, give life or steal life, those are pretty good. Uh, Orpheus's loot, which is actually a um, it's a class weapon, so this one's pretty easy to get. Ten mana cost, pretty low, and what it does is it, it it'll give you life, and then it'll cleanse and enchant all the other allies. So this has some survivability as well. If you put it at the top of your team here in arena. Uh, every time you cast it, you will be gaining more and more life. Uh, plus, it will be enchanting the rest of your troops, so you don't have to worry as much about mana. Um, you know, then you have things like this, the Staff of St. Ostra, which is another class weapon. 
will cleanse all your allies, give all allies a life. Uh, that'll help your team survive as well. So uh, spend enough time on that. Um, I'll show you real quick here the armor that I was talking about earlier. So if you go here, you click on your little um, avatar icon here. And if you go to armor bonus, you'll see these different armor sets in here. Now most of these you can purchase with gems. As you can see, I haven't even purchased all of them yet. Uh, but you can purchase some of these for gems. And if you want to spend real money on the game, $50 for Dragon Knight armor will give you the most bonuses. Uh, and you won't have to keep swapping back and forth between different armor sets. I have not done that uh, yet. Um, I'm pretty happy with the dragon armor. That's the one I wear the most, which is this one here, because I, I like the 100% bonus to gold. But if you're farming souls, you want to have the celestial armor bought and equipped, because it gives you 100% bonus to souls. And that is, if you're going after those souls, that's what you want. So I have that equipped right now. And um, they changed a few things in the game. So last year we had the old set of challenges. And uh, those were the preferred way for most people to farm souls. And they, when they revamped Explorer, uh, they changed the difficulty settings and what rewards you get and all of those sorts of things. So uh, what you want to do for Explorer battles when you're farming souls is simply stay on difficulty one. Uh, as you can see down here in the bottom, there is no bonus to souls with the higher difficulties. Uh, you only get a bonus to gold, your mist stones, and your tokens. So you, if you're farming souls, you want to stay at difficulty 1. And you want to have a fast team that has soul bonus troops in it. And I'm going to show you one, a couple of teams with one uh, Pharos Ra and two Pharos Ra. And then two teams that I have set up here without any Pharos Ra at all so let me show you first of all the uh uh let's do the teams without pharaoh's raw first because i think a lot of you probably don't have it yet uh this one isn't going to get you as much souls as the uh, second team i'm going to show you without uh pharaoh's raw but this one is faster than the other one uh i'm using the phylactery weapon which this weapon you can get pretty early on in the game uh, there is a website you can go to called GOWDB.com where you can look up all the weapons. Here's a, a picture here of the phylactery and it actually shows you the mastery is required is 19 blue and purple. So when you're leveling up, uh, if you select blue and purple, uh, you're going to get this weapon unlocked for you once you do that 19 times for blue and for purple. So probably around the earliest you could get it is like level uh, probably 40 about there if you select blue and purple every, every single time uh, alternating it. So you're probably by like level 100 you should have this weapon. Um, and what it does is it will destroy your, restore your life to full and allow you to get an extra turn and then you will gain 30 souls or whatever your current magic is so if you're lower level you will probably gain a few less souls and you might have to cast this thing twice instead of once but um there's that now for banner you want uh, with this setup blue and green because the phylactery takes blue rowane here is taking blue and green and that's rowane is going to be your damage dealer um, and it should wipe out the enemy team in one hit, uh, if not two. Um, so, uh, for the class, I have the Corsair class simply because I have it traded and it give me two bonus to blue. And that is a mana color that we need for both of these troops. But you can choose whatever class that you want. Uh, one that starts with half mana or uh, a class that gives a bonus to the blue or green or purple will probably work just as well so uh, let's go through a quick battle here this is level one most of these battles are going to take you uh, like 30 seconds or less if you have a team like this and as you can see both uh, the phylactery and Rowane got full pretty quick I'm just going to cast the phylactery and then we'll cast Rowane and as you can see up here at the top, there is, I got almost to the max of my souls, which was the maximum was 40. With my 
uh, celestial armor that 40 souls turned into 116. Um, and there's nothing else in this team that is boosting the souls other than my armor. Because Rowan doesn't boost souls, Leprechaun doesn't, the Mirage Queen doesn't. All of these troops here are just to make it fast. So if you want to go as fast as possible and still get some souls, this team probably uh, is going to be the fastest there. Um, the second one I want to show off here is, is going to be slower because you don't have as much mana generating going on. Uh, and you're going to have to rely on whatever falls down on the board. Uh, we're using a flattery weapon uh, again. And then we have the Rowane for our damage. We're using the Arch uh, Magus class because of the double purple that it gives me. But we're still going with the same banner. I could, you know, you could change this up a little bit uh, with different classes and different banners. Um, but yeah, we're using two zombies because uh, you will have to unlock the second trait, Necromancy. But these are common cards, so you should have these really early on in the game. Uh, and you should be able to unlock this second trait here without any arcane trait stones. You just have to farm a few of those other minor and major uh, and ruinic trait stones possibly. But that shouldn't be too hard to unlock once you unlock that. Two of these is going to give you 100 bonus to your souls and let's go in here and do a battle with this one so we're just going to take green or blue here so we can get both of these up we got them up pretty quickly we want to cast the uh, phylactery first but as you can see here it was 40 up there on the previous battle now the maximum is 80 souls and that's because these two zombies with the 50% and 50% gave us 100%, which is double of what it was before. So you don't want to make the mistake of casting Rowane before you cast the Phylactery because that would be, uh, you wouldn't get any souls from that. Uh, now we're at almost the maximum. Let's just finish off the enemy team and we'll see how many souls we get. So we got 243 souls. That's about, you know, a little more than double of what we got last time. And that, uh, you know, it didn't go, it wasn't too slow of a battle. So you can do something like this. Now, uh, really quickly here, if you wanted to, uh, you could do something like, uh, if you have these. Now these troops are a little more rare. You, as you can see, I only have six here. Uh, but these do, if you fully trade these, they give you a bonus to purple mana and it still gives you that bonus to 50 souls. So you could put two of these in here if you have them instead of zombie. And since that's boosting purple so much, let's uh, not use Rowane and let's do, let's use the Sunbird. And we can change the banner to red and purple. And we'll do double purple red. That way we're getting the Flactory and the Sunbird up. As well as our class here. We're using the Arch Magus class. Which if you have it traded. Uh, will give you two bonus to purple gems. So what that's going to do for us. Is give us a lot of purple. Because the class is giving us two bonus to purple. And the banner is giving us two bonus. So that's going to be four bonus purple every uh, time we match uh, those gems so we sh this should go by pretty quick well and I should say here we're actually getting more than that because we have two Aziras so and these do stack so instead of getting four purple we're getting six bonus to purple uh, so that is why Aziras could be better than the zombie because you're getting that bonus to purple now, unfortunately, you don't know what the board is going to look like when it comes up. You could get lucky and get a lot of purple, or it could be the way it looks like right now for me, which is no purple at all. But since we have so much bonus of purple going on, one three match here should fill up my phylactery and the sunbird. And it did. So now all we have to do is cast the phylactery and then cast sunbird and they're all dead and uh that we got 243 souls the same thing that we got with the uh that um rowan team so now let's go take a look at a couple of pharaoh's raw teams here uh similar concept 
on this one uh, except I have Pharaoh's Ra in there and this is going to replace the zombies or the Aziris that we were using and it's actually going to give us more souls because it's 150 bonus instead of just 100 bonus. So we will be getting more souls from this team. Uh, but it's going to take a lot of arcane trait stones to unlock this Necromaster final trait on Pharaoh's Ra. So if you, if you don't have enough arcane stones yet, it's better off using those two zombies or the two Aziris or whatever you have that's going to give you the 50 bonus to your souls until you get a Pharaoh's Ra. But Pharaoh's Ra is definitely, once you get it and you un unlock its last trait there, it's definitely better than using two of those other ones. Uh, now, what I'm doing here is I'm using the Sunbird, I'm using the Phylactery, and except we're also using the Leprechaun, which starts at full mana, and because I want to explode the board and get that mana going as quickly as possible into my Phylactery and the Sunbird. So, of course, you can take any uh, three or four matches that you see right off the bat, and as you can see there, it's I almost destroyed the entire team there with my... Uh, skulls but once you cast phylactery I am now up to the maximum of 100 we can cast the firebird and dead and we got 304 souls so as fast as that went you could probably do three of these per minute and get about 900 uh, souls per minute which isn't isn't that bad uh, you know if you're if you go th if you have like an extra 10 or 15 minutes where you just want to farm some souls you can rack up uh, uh, 10 20 thousand souls or more um, so let's now take a look at the tool Pharaoh's Ra here so if you're lucky enough to get two Pharaoh's Ra this is the team that you could use now it's gonna be a little bit slower uh, than the one with leprechaun in it because you don't have anything exploding the board, generating that mana. And, um, you know, you're going to have to just see what falls down on the board. So let's go into this. But that extra Pharos Ra, you know, for as, as much slower as this team is, that extra Pharos Ra is going to give you uh, an extra... extra 150% bonus to souls. So, and I got lucky with some matches there. We're now close to being full there. We're going to, it still went by pretty quick. And now we got close to 500 souls. So if it goes by that quick, you could probably get, uh, you know, closer to 1,500 souls per minute if you got two Pharaoh's Ra. Um, but yeah, you want to keep it on difficulty one. So those were some quick teams there. Um, another team that you could use that is kind of more of a classic team is you use the Dragon Soul, um, which is a troop. Let's see if I can find it here. How come that didn't... I just typed in Dragon. <laughs> no wonder it didn't come up. Uh, okay, so Dragon Soul. Now this team, you could use a hero class with it, but... Uh, usually people don't. Let me just set up the troops here. And I'll explain what's going on. So, we're almost there. And, uh, yeah. So, what you could do is... This is a little different. As you can tell, I kind of like the Leprechaun troop. So... A lot of people will use Aziris in here because it gives them a bonus to a bonus to purple. So they'll put that in there. But then you got to rely on enough purple and red coming down on the board for the Dragon Soul. So this is the team I would probably recommend if you want to do a soul farming team. You have the Dragon Soul, you have Pharaoh's Rod, and you have Umber Wolf. And Umber Wolf is down here because of the dark storm that it starts at every turn which is going to be extra purple mana um so you're gonna have to spend some arcane trade stones on this guy to level to, to unlock all his traits and for this um dragon soul doesn't really matter to do the traits there so this team is more arcane trade stone costly 
Um, what I would do is change the banner, obviously, to a uh, double purple red. And let's just uh, see how fast this team works and what kind of souls we get with it. So we're going to want to explode the board. And uh, we didn't fill up Dragon Soul first time, but it was close. And then we're just going to explode the board and uh when you cast dragon soul twice as you can see up there we got pretty close to 100 souls so i got 258 souls with this yeah so as you can see there that uh this team works pretty well even without the hero class and one thing to take note is when you have that celestial armor equipped uh let me go back out here really quick just to show you again the armor bonus here, uh, Celestial Armor, is this, you have that equipped, you don't even need your hero class in there for you to still get that 100% soul bonus. So that gives you some, some room to add different troops in there like I did with this. Uh, this team here, there's no hero class, but you have that armor still equipped, and you will still get that bonus. Uh, so as you can see, there's different ways to do these soul farming teams with Pharos Ra and without Pharos Ra. But I definitely recommend uh, staying at Explore Level 1 because you're, uh, you're, you're going to be able to do them way quicker. You're not going to get any more souls if you go to a higher difficulty. So that's something there that I recommend. And uh, yeah, I showed you, I think, most of the teams that I've used either in the past or teams that I recommend here for uh, doing soul farming. Now, another thing to to look for for souls is uh, we already went over the adventure board. We went over the arena, but there is also uh, new challenges here that they did. Uh, where is you go into the challenges for different kingdoms, you'll get glory for one level and you'll get some uh, different types of resources like gems, uh, gem keys, you'll get uh, jewels, you'll get some ingots. And there is a difficulty in here. I don't remember how high it is, how difficult the battles are, but there is one where you do get souls for defeating uh, these different challenges. So uh, that's another way you can get souls. And um, treasure hunt is also a good way to get souls when you're very early in the game. I would say once you have enough of those troops like uh, Aziris or the zombies or the phylactery weapon, uh, once you have a few of those troops, doing explore battles on explore difficulty one with those troops is going to get you souls quicker than treasure hunt. But when you're very early in the game, if you go in here to treasure hunt, and let's just go through a really quick battle. I'm not really going to think too much about where... Uh, what I'm doing here because I just want to show you at the end that you do get souls Well, and you can kind of see the uh, the rewards over to the side here the right hand side So if you get one of these bags and higher you have a chance to get souls and that's it shows you the rewards here So when you're really early on in the game It's probably worth it to do your maps just because you're going to be getting souls and you're going to need souls very early on in the game in order to level up your troops and that's going to make it much easier for you to farm gold and to you know participate in some of the event battles that your guild is in so let's see how many souls we get here from this treasure map i have a lot of extra turns here I'm not even trying to get extra turns and it was giving me a few of them. If you get four matches in here, it doesn't take up a turn. But if you get a five match, then it gives you an extra turn. So here we go. I finally ended it. I should get some souls from this. So I got 73 souls. I actually did get an arcane a trait stone, which is something that you could get in here too, which is nice. You don't really get a lot of gold. You do get a little bit of glory. Uh, just as a side note here, this is probably another good way that you can get glory early on in the game. And glory will allow you to purchase those glory keys. And you do have a chance of getting some legendary troops in those glory keys. That will help you early on in the game. 
right here the main point that I wanted to show is that you do get souls for doing these treasure maps and very early on in the game that that is a good way to start to get a few of those souls so I think I covered just about every way there is a way here in the soul forge where you can craft souls 100 souls for 10 diamonds but I do not recommend doing this don't do it your diamonds are worth way more than a hundred souls way more so don't do that uh, and there really isn't any other way in here to craft souls and uh, there is another way that you can get souls I'm, I'm just making sure here that I'm not forgetting anything so let's go to the underworld there is a way in the underworld that you can get souls and now this is going to be another whole video later in the future that I'll do is uh, explaining a lot more of what goes on here in the underworld because I know that's confusing for many people and I don't want to get into all the, the details of that right now but I will cover a little bit of it that pertains to the souls. So what I do is I like to keep at least one of my delve factions in the underworld at level 20 so that I can farm resources uh, daily in that that delve now city of thieves is the one that i have kept at level 20 and that what this what that does is it allows for me to defeat the enemy troops really quickly because they're low level they're only level 20 and the speed of completing it is important because that you know if i only have 10 or 15 minutes uh maybe i got a 15 minute at break i can complete uh two to three of these delve runs and just farming them you know i'm not trying to push the delve higher i want to keep it at level 20 and i can uh i can just do that really quickly because maybe i have a busy day and i don't want to spend uh you know like a half an hour trying to do difficult battles getting pushing these delves up to level 500 so that's just kind of my opinion on that but um as far as souls you do get souls in here uh, so what you need to do and you will still get souls in these delve runs even without updating or upgrading the uh the horde level here but i want to go in here and show you this really quickly because this will increase your chances of getting more souls from doing these delve battles uh your you get these sacred treasure uh cards from opening portals with your portal shards and these are very important because these sacred treasure cards will allow you to upgrade your kingdom now it does cost gold as you can see if i click on uh my uh, treasure here it'll tell you the 50 percent chance it has to upgrade the level of it i can't go any higher than quality 10 but that's really what you want to go for is the quality 10 of 10. So really quickly here the quality and let's just let's bring this back down to one okay so we're let's say this is before you upgrade anything on this delve kingdom this is you're going to get uh just the base amount of souls gold glory and ingots from this kingdom when you're going when you're this delve when you're going through the different battles uh, as you begin to add those cards to it and upgrade the quality you're going to see that the rewards are going to be doubled once you get to like five if you push it all the way to ten your gold reward is going to be a four times multiplier glory is two times ingots and souls are two times now if you just want to maximize your souls your soul bonus actually maxes out right at hoard quality two so you shouldn't have to spend too much gold to get it to hoard quality too the only difference here is is that when you defeat a boss room you're going to get an extra level of the the chest that you get if you get it up to you'll get a three times bonus when you get it to 10. that's why i try to get mine to 10. but getting it to level four will give you a one plus to the delve chest level bonus and you will have uh, the two um, times multiplier of souls so if you can afford to get it to four i would say go for it uh, but if you just want to get those extra souls try to get it to hoard quality too 
because that will max out your bonus on souls. So what level does really quickly is it just boosts your troop stats. That's all level does. Uh, but yeah, so you're going to use these cards here and then you'll add treasure. It'll cost you a certain amount of gold and then you'll see the quality rise. Uh, okay, so now that I went through that, hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Uh, but let's go through and I'm going to do one uh, clean delve run here, a farm for you guys. Just so you can see what's going on and, and the what I'm talking about with getting souls from here. So this is my farming team for this. Now it depends on the delve that you're in because it restricts the color. So it'll, it'll show here troop restrictions and it shows the mana color. Now for me... I recommend that you make sure that you're going to farm in a delve that has colors for Rowan, Leprechaun, that combination, which you want green and blue at least uh, as the colors, or purple, so you see that I can have both of those in there. Or if you want to go Sunbird, that's a red-purple color. And uh, so maybe like purple green would work with sunbird and leprechaun or you want to get some combination that works with troops like this that are going to be really quick and blast through these battles. So let me go in here and we'll, we'll go through this really quick. So I'm not even really going to pay attention to the board. I'm just going to explode it. My leprechaun will be full and we're just going to e explode the enemy troops. And for each room that I defeat, I'm going to get a little bit of souls here. And these delve room souls, 11 of them, that, there's souls per delve room sometimes that you'll get. And it shows right up here. So for defeating this room, I will get 40 uh, delve room souls. And since it's at level 20, it's going to be really easy to beat this team. Now, we got 56 Delvrim uh, souls because we have that Celestial Armor on, and that's giving us a little bit of a bonus. Now, the next room, it just says one soul, but it's giving us 2,000 gold. So, besides the souls, uh, that's the main topic of this video, but I do want to mention here that this is also a good way to get some extra gold early on in the game, is uh, farming one of these uh, Delves. Because each one of these rooms will give you a certain amount of gold. And then you have a chance to, when you open up the chest at the very end, the boss room chest, you have a chance of getting a bunch more gold as well as souls. So we got a couple of souls there, but we also got that gold. That's kind of nice. So this room has 30 souls right there. You can see on the card. And it doesn't happen all the time, but when you get to the end and you defeat the boss, you do have a chance of getting souls in that boss chest. And sometimes, like, if, if you have the max multiplier of two times bonus uh, that I was talking about earlier, then if the souls do show up in there, it's usually, like, over a thousand souls that you'll get just from uh, getting that in the boss chest. And you don't have to use my combination of Rowan and Leprechaun, and, and, but I, I like it because it's fast. But that's really the main thing you want to do. You can choose any delve you want, keep it at level 20, and uh, as long as you have troops that can do damage to all the enemies and get powered up really quickly, because that's, that's what it's all about is speed. So as you can see, we're getting more souls here, 68. And if you add up all the souls that you get just from defeating all the rooms, it's going to be several hundred. So I know it, that doesn't sound like a lot, and you probably will make more souls just farming explore battles. But uh, it's still... It's still something. Uh, now we're kind of stuck here. We need to get a blue or a green. He took my blue. That wasn't nice. He took my blue again. It's because he's got this uh, Dwarven Gate. Well, 
if, if I could just get this purple, I could get Leprechaun up again. So occasionally this will happen where you don't have, uh, you don't have uh, the right man on the board. And it slows you down a little bit. We finally got it. But generally it goes by pretty quick. Got a few more souls there. And we got 114 Delvrim souls on that uh, room. That was pretty good. So if you add up all the souls we've gotten so far, it's probably around three, maybe 400 souls. And then we got this last boss room, which we're going to get some souls from it. But we also have a chest upgrade. Right now I'm at level three. Once we beat it, we're going to have, uh, that's going to get boosted up to probably like five or six. But then... Since I have mine to hoard quality 10, it's going to get a 3 plus bonus added to with that. So I'm probably going to have somewhere between a 7 and a 10 uh, bonus for my uh, boss chest. I won't kill everything in one hit. Yep, at 7 for my uh, chest. I got 93 uh, souls from that room. And now let's open up the chest. Uh, hopefully we'll get lucky enough to get some souls in here. It'll be perfect for this video. And we didn't get lucky enough to get souls, but if I did get souls in this chest, it's usually around like a thousand souls. Um, so I'm just pointing that out to you guys because that is another way that you can get souls, even though it's not probably the best way. But it certainly is is another way you can get it. And uh, I think finally this is probably the last method that you can use to get souls. And that is in your keys. So when you open up your keys, if you look at your gold keys here, it shows you the chance about of how uh, chance you're going to have for souls. So it says 3% chance to get souls out of these uh, gold keys. So if I open up, I have 240 of them right now. I'm just going to open up 200. We'll scroll to the bottom. And it says right here we got 143 souls. So you do get souls from that. Um, I don't recommend actually purchasing gold keys with your gold because it's really expensive. It costs 15,000 gold to open 50 uh, uh, chests. And the amount of... The amount of gold to souls ratio of conversion there, I think, is pretty poor. You can uh, farm more souls in just doing those level 1 explore battles uh, than you can getting them out of your keys. So, that pretty much covers every way that you can get souls that I know of, except uh, I, would be, <laughs> I would be wrong here, not to mention that you can get some souls from your guild tasks. So these are the purple guild tasks. You can put gold in here and get your souls. But um, yeah, I guess the reason why I forgot to mention this earlier was because you just don't get that much souls from this. Um, you know, I just got done saying that the gold to soul ratio in your, guild, in your uh, gold keys is really bad. This is even worse. Look at how it costs 150,000 gold to get 400 souls. That's, that is so bad. Don't, I wouldn't even mess with that, honestly. Uh, because with those teams that I showed you in uh, Explore Battle 1, if you go back here to Explore, oh, let's, let's just do this, okay? Because uh, I want to I wanna really show you how bad that is. Um, if we go to, let's use this team, okay? And you could replace the Aziris with the zombie uh, troops that I showed earlier. But let's just do this. And let's see how many souls we get. And how long it takes for this battle. Now, we do have to rely on our mana colors, you know, showing up. We need purple and we need red, so this battle is going to be a little bit slower because... 
for whatever reason, uh, I got a lot of green to start with on that board. Okay, now they're full. We can cast our phylactery. And then we're going to cast, uh, yeah, we're already at 78 souls there. Now it's 80. Let's look how many we get. We got our celestial. Look at this. 243 souls. 243 souls. That's more than half of what you get for that guild task. You would have to spend 150,000 gold to get 400 souls with that guild task. It's just that's not worth it. You can do two battles with this simple team. Sunbird, Phylactery, and two Zombie or two Aziras and, and Explore Battle 1. You can do two of those battles and get more souls just from that. Uh, so definitely I wouldn't try to do much with the guild tasks. I would focus on explore battles uh, with those simple teams. And you're going to get more souls from that than you will probably from any other way that I showed you. But I wanted to be as comprehensive as possible. Show you all the different ways you can get souls in the game. Um, and there, there's one last way before someone in the comments says, Oh, you forgot this way, Loot Wizard. And I almost did forget it. Uh, but before that happens, and before I end this video, I want to show you the, the last way. I'm pretty sure this is the last way you can get souls in the game. All right. Uh, so if you go to your troops and you go to a troop, and as you can see, like I have a lot of extra troops here on uh, some of these cards. Um, like this one here has got 428. If you go into the upgrade, you can disenchant the troop uh, for extra souls. So I can sell all extra copies past what is required for Mythic on this troop and get an extra 4,240 souls. Now there's an option here to disenchant all extra troops. I don't really recommend clicking that button because... Uh, sometimes you want more than one, uh, copy of a, uh, of a mythic troop. So, cause some teams you want, uh, two copies in there. So I don't recommend doing that. You know, you can go to individual ones that you have a lot on just to get a few extra souls. Um, uh, but you do want to try to send that troop to mythic first before you start disenchanting extra troops on that one. Uh, so I can disenchant that, give myself some extra extra things there and uh so yeah that i believe that is the last way that you can get souls in the game i might have missed one so if i did feel free to post a comment on this video and uh let us all know what i missed out on but this video has gone on long enough guys so i'm gonna end it here thanks for watching as always and if you like this video, please give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing for more videos like this in the future. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Later.